Greetings and welcome to bnd.biz. My name is Alan Thorne. In this movie, we're going to be looking at how to create a more advanced health script. You might have seen our earlier video in which we created a health script that allowed the player character or NPCs or objects to take damage over time and they could be destroyed. Or maybe you've created your own health script script file in which characters have a certain amount of health and take damage. In this movie, we're going to look how to make a much more sophisticated and effective health script. So in this movie, we're going to be extending on basic health functionality, and I'm going to be adding two really great features that you're probably going to want to incorporate in nearly any of the games you create. First, how can we create custom behavior when our health changes? So maybe our health changes and you want to do something in response. You don't know yet what exactly that is, but you want to have this feature set where you can customize what happens when the health changes or when a character dies. In addition to that, maybe you want health regeneration abilities so that over time, if a character gets damaged, they can regenerate their health slowly over time. We're going to see how to do both of these things here and not just how to do them, but how to do them effectively. So I'm going to bring back our health script file that we created in our other movie that you can check out here on bindy.biz. In this health script file, we are using C sharp properties. We have a starting health at 100 and over time by using the health the health uh, property here, we can change the player character's health. And when it reduces to zero, we run a die function. It's a pretty straightforward script file. We also have this trigger value here. This is the on trigger stay function that we apply to a danger zone, to a danger point in the level to reduce the character's health. Let's see in the scene how this works. I'm going to press play on the toolbar and select our character here with the really enormous hat. This character is called Jeff, and I really like his jacket. Here on the floor, we have this red, this bubbling hot cauldron. You're going to have to imagine the lava here. Again, use your imagination. It's simply a red square on the floor, but this is a danger area. Now, when I move Jeff into the danger area, his health is going to reduce. Now, if I leave him here long enough, I'm not going to do that, but if I left him there long enough, his health would reduce to zero. If I take a look at the script file that we have, inside the die function when the health reduces to zero right now the object is destroyed in many cases that might be what i want i want to destroy an object that has been depleted here but i might not always want to do this so i'm going to completely remove the destroy part of the die function so the first thing i want to take a look at is when the health changes and when we die how can we perform custom behavior and various different actions. We might want to communicate with different objects. We might want to display on-screen text or play a sound. How can we do all of that stuff without adding a ton of code? Well, it's really simple. Let's move up to the top of the script file here where it says using Unity Engine. I'm going to be adding two extra lines. One is using Unity Events and the other one is Events Systems. I'm going to add these two here. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is at the very top of the script file, I'm going to create two new event objects and we'll see how these work in just a second. So I'm going to create the first one, which is called a unity event. So it's going to complete the entire statement for me. And I'm going to say on health change. So as you can imagine, this event is going to fire every time the health changes. In addition to this, I'm going to have another one here, which is unity event. And this is going to be on health expired. And as you can imagine, this one is going to fire only when the health is reduced to zero. So next up, I'm going to move down here to our C sharp property. So on health changed. Now that's going to happen whenever the health changes. So in this instance, it's going to happen every time that set happens. So the health changes at this line. Here. So I'm going to choose invoke on health changed dot invoke. We're going to see what that does in just a second. Now, when the health is reduced to zero and we run the die function, in this instance, this is where the health expires. So I'm going to run that event to invoke. Great. I'm going to save this code and minimize that and go back to Unity to take a look at how our Jeff object looks inside the object inspector. 
So I'm going to select Jeff. Now straight away you can see that we have these two new event areas added. So we have on health changed and on health expired. Now what this means is if we can customize what happens inside here by using this slightly obnoxious and confusing visual scripting thing, it's not really sure what it is, but we can customize functionality directly in the editor here. So for example, let's say when the Jeff character's health changes, we want to hide a particular object inside the scene. For example, it could just be this very simple cube over here. I'm not really sure in a practical case why we would want to hide a cube when a character is damaged. But the point is, is this can apply to absolutely any object. We can change them in any way we like. So I'm going to select the Jeff character here and move to the on health change and click the plus icon. Now here I can choose what I want to happen and what object it should happen to. So in this case, I'm going to drag and drop, let's say our cube into this slot here. And then here in the drop down, I can choose game object. And although it appears outside the recording window, there is the option for set active. I can enable this to show the object or I can enable this to or deactivate this to hide the object. And that's going to happen every time the health changes. Now, when this character should be destroyed, that is on health expired, I'm going to click plus and add the Jeff object into here. And I'm going to, let's say, run the die function. Actually, there's no die function listed in my dropdown. And the reason for that is because it's not a public function. Let's go back here to our die function. And I'm going to list that as public. And inside here, we're going to print the message dead. It's going to print that to the console. Like so. I'm going to save that. Minimize Visual Studio. Go back here to Jeff and move back to health and choose the die function. We can run any public function on that script via this dialog right here. So I'm now going to press play on the toolbar. And this time when I move Jeff into the danger zone here, I actually notice that the box was destroyed straight away. And the reason for that is very simple. If I go back to my script file, you can see inside the start function here, I'm actually setting the health points to their starting value here. So I'm simply going to temporarily remove that so that it doesn't happen at the beginning of the level, but happens just when I move Jeff into the danger zone. So I'm going to press play here grab our Jeff character and move him into the danger zone. And as soon as the health changes, the box vanishes. Now our health is continually reducing. And finally, when it gets to zero here, it's going to run the die function, which will print a message to the console. And here it prints the value of dead. The character has died because here inside our accessor property, we have run the die function. So that's how we can customize and create our own types of behaviors whenever those key events happen. Notice here, there is really no limit to the amount we can choose to add to our events to customize them here, and we can remove them directly from the inspector too. This is a really great way to create custom behavior when key events happen. Now let's take a look at the health regeneration ability. So this guy, Jeff, when he walks into the danger zone, he can sustain damage. Well, that's really not surprising. It's a pretty dangerous place. But if we were to move Jeff outside of the danger zone again and just left him standing there, maybe we want his health to regenerate over time. Maybe you don't, but we're going to see how we can code it so that it really doesn't matter. You get to choose whether it does or doesn't. I'm going to go back to the script file here and I'm going to move to the top of the script file and create a completely new public float variable here. So this is going to be my regenerate speed, and it's going to tell us how many health points over time, how many health points per second this character is going to regenerate back. So maybe he has this kind of special ability where he can repair his health or repair his flesh. I'm going to say 10 health points per second is what he's going to regenerate. So I'm going to move down here, and this time I really do need to use the update function. So inside the update function, I'm going to take my health points value here, grab health points, 
and I'm simply going to choose plus equals. It's going to continually add to our health, our regenerate speed. So our regenerate speed multiplied by time dot delta time. Now remember, if our regenerate speed is equal to zero, if it has no regeneration capacity at all, then we're not going to be regenerating any health simply because zero multiplied by time dot delta time is zero and zero means no change at all. So I'm going to choose control S to save that and go back to our script file here. I'm going to go return back to Jeff, our character here. I'm going to change actually our regenerate speed from 10 to two here and press play. Now when Jeff is standing here and his regenerate speed is set to two, you can see that the health points are still 100. And that's because if I go back to our script file, you can see we're using the clamp function here to ensure that the health is between a minimum and maximum. So I'm going to go back to the file here and go back to the danger zone to have our health reduce. You can see our health is reducing pretty consistently here. But if I move Jeff outside of the danger zone to stand on his own, you can now see that the health is beginning to regenerate back. And actually, if I increase the speed, you can see that this increases too but it's never going to go above 100. It always regenerates back to 100. Of course, I can move him into the danger zone again here and set my regenerate speed to zero, in which case when I move Jeff outside of the danger zone, we've sustained that damage and we have no regenerate capacity. So that's a really easy way in which you can create regeneration capacity directly into your health scripts. So I hope this has been helpful. I've been Alan Thorne. And this has been BND.biz. Thank you for watching.